hardware introduction. And what we're going to go over is the basic system from start to finish. Now the system, this particular system includes a gas source of some sort, either in this case it's a doer of nitrogen, but it can also be a standard gas generator. So the nitrogen source is here, it introduces that the nitrogen source is introduced into the mass spec, which we'll get to in just a second. This is the LC portion of the system, which includes an aqueous mobile phase. And the aqueous mobile phase consists of ammonium formate and formic acid. The formic acid is important in the mobile phase because you want an acidic environment in order to enhance the um, ion formation of your compounds. We've got the second mobile phase, which is organic mobile phase, and that is the ammonium formate and formic acid in a methanol solution. We've also got a syringe wash for the auto sampler section. That is a 50-50 of both the aqueous and the organic mobile phase. Standard references to the mobile phase are the aqueous is usually an A designation and the organic mobile phase is usually a B designation. So in this particular system, we've got two pumps, one for the aqueous and one for the organic system. Um, should we open the pumps? Uh, sure, it's not a lot to see. Yeah. Okay. Now in these systems, you can see that you've got the purging valve right here, which helps you when you're changing out your mobile phases, you want to make sure you get rid of any um, air bubbles in your system that can cause poor retention time uh, standardization. Now let's see what else we got here. This is the column oven. Inside we've got a, a filtering column, well not a column, it's a filtering frit. That we change every time you go to use the system. You want to use a new one because you don't want the system to get plugged up. The column that we've got in here is a standard reverse phase C8 column that we use for our separation. The auto sampler is here. It's difficult to see the components in the auto sampler like the loop and the syringe, but they're in there. The auto sampler tray. Most of the other parts are way in the back and they're too difficult for even me to see, so. Okay, so the sample, the samples are inside the auto sampler and they're injected onto the column where they're separated. Then they're introduced into this, the mass spec side of the entire piece of instrumentation. And this is the source housing. So let's disconnect this so we can look at the inside of it. Now one of the things that you want to make sure that you are aware of when you go to take off the source housing is you need to make sure and deactivate your profiles which we'll go over in the software part but it's important because sometimes the system gets confused when you take the source off and the software thinks it's still activated. So the sample is introduced into the source housing and as you can see in here we've got the probe in the center is where the sample actually comes out. There's an electrode, it's a very small piece of wire that's inside that probe, which houses the actual sample. Um, the two stems on either side of the probe are commonly referred to as hair dryers. It's a heated gas source which causes solvent evaporation, which enhances the ions actually making it into the mass spec side. And this is where the samples go to waste. Now, from this source housing, you can see that the sample is actually introduced perpendicular to the instrument plate. This is the curtain plate right here. Let me set this down so I don't drop it because that would be very bad. Okay, so this is what's called the curtain plate. This, we clean. It's just like the sample front over here. We clean this every time before we use it. You want to clean it every day. Behind this is what's called the orifice plate. And all these parts we've gone over in the lecture part of this workshop. Um, the orifice 
plate with this particular setup, since it's sprayed perpendicular to the sample introduction plate, the orifice plate doesn't need to be cleaned nearly as frequently. Occasionally, you do need to clean it. Um, behind this, you've got the Q0 portion of the instrument. Occasionally, that needs to be cleaned. We're not going to break that down today, because in order to do that, you have to vent the system. And then you've got the three other quadrupoles and the, the linear ion trap inside this housing and the detector at the end. Um, this piece of hardware is also equipped with a syringe pump that is commonly used for infusions and the tuning and optimization parts of running this instrument, which we'll get to later. You can also use this this is a diverter valve. You can use a diverter valve. Some people use that if they have a particularly dirty sample and they, want, they don't want to mess up the instrument, so they will divert some of their sample to waste before they introduce it into the mass spec side. Um, what else is there? I'm missing something. Oh, you can do with this part of this source housing. Let me put it back on so we can see it. This part of the source housing right here, you can actually take out the center piece of metal and put in a second um, union. union, and that has a three joint in it. So you can be running mobile phase at the same time that you're infusing a compound. So that is another little added feature to this. When you're optimizing your instrument, you want to make sure that you optimize the source housing components, and that will include um, the position of your probe. You can change the position of the electrode inside the probe. You can change the position of the probe itself. With these micrometers, you can adjust the actual up and down position of the probe. You can adjust the electrode itself with this union. That will let you retract the electrode or extend it. All of that just depends on the conditions that you're running in the system at a time. The vacuum system. Okay. This piece of hardware has a turbo pump on the inside and it has a rough pump that goes with it as well. Um, it is a two pump system. Mike, what are you, uh, what are you feeling? The only thing I was going to mention is that the, the Highly pure nitrogen here fills both the source and facilitates uh, desolvation, and mm -hmm. it also is used as the collision gas in Q2, which is the quadrupole that between the two mass filtering quadrupoles after Q0. Okay, and that's where we're going to get our collision-induced dissociation and produce our mass spectra when we run compounds on here. So. Exactly. Okay.